Raphael, uh, as I observed myself during the past year, I saw that I have a problem focusing on details. Usually I set some goals that I want to achieve within a deadline, a week or so, or a month. Um, by the end of the deadline, I recognize a pattern. I am achieving almost all of my health and fitness goals, almost half of my spiritual goals, and close to none of my financial goals. It seems that I can find the discipline and motivation when it comes to my health, but it's harder when it comes to my wealth and other technical stuff. My question is this, should I focus more on doing what I enjoy and comes easy to me, like fitness goals, or should I focus more on doing things that are harder but is more appreciated by this world, like business for me? I'll be on the 1 p.m. call. So this is this relates exactly to what we're talking about, bro. And I'm I'm right there with you because if I had my choice, <laughs> I would spend my lay days lifting reading and praying that's it i don't want to do anything else right now this is my job you do what's in front of you so i come in and, and that's why i think god put me in this situation with this with you guys you know you I, I realized that i had no ambition to be internet famous any longer i had no an, ambition to reach for likes and subscribers and that's really what the whole youtube thing was about you know, a lot of it was just, it was out of my own pride. Like, you know, how many people like me? And that's why when people stopped liking me, my ego crumbled. And I realized that was fruitless. I, don't, I really don't want that. But I do enjoy speaking uh, and answering questions, right? So how do, I, how do I sort of do that? Well, create a closed circle of a select group of men that you can work with. And that's what you guys are. So, uh, what am I saying? I'm saying that just like you, I find my life passes in greater harmony with my truth, with the truth, with God the Father, when I exercise the gifts that he's given me. And you know that you're exercising your gifts when they come easily. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about how it comes easily to watch TV. <laughs> Right? It's one of the things my dad said. He said, get up every day and do something productive. Something productive. Lifting, exercising your body, taking care of your health. Well, I couldn't find anything more productive than that. Right? Besides what you're also doing, which are your spiritual goals. Right? And if you can get into the monotony of taking care of your body and taking care of your spirit, <laughs> the soul will take care of itself. But now the financial goals are soulish. They're soulish. And I think you know that. You even said that they're soulish. You said that they, you know, should I focus on what I enjoy, right? Which is productive. You're doing productive work. Praying and lifting is very productive. They're very productive. Um, and I, I got to be honest, like, as a man, what else? If we lived in prehistoric times, what were men doing? They were lifting and praying. Their life revolved around the, the uh, hunting and gathering and worship, right? That's all they did. They would farm and go to church. <laughs> that was it, right? Like I think about the first Americans. They would farm, they would do their work and they go to church. They would use their bodies and then they would tend to their soul. Now, I'm not telling you not to have financial goals. Uh, and, and for each one of us, our financial capacity is different. I have some friends that they just have a knack for making tons of money. I don't get it. They do things that I wouldn't want to do. They live in a way I wouldn't want to live. You know, a lot of them have, don't have any children. Um, I marvel and I'm like, wow, this guy, everything he touches turns to gold. That's pretty amazing. I don't have that. So instead of, you know, like I was in the past, I would like, I would try to focus on monetary goals and trying to, you know, have and get what other people get. I realized I just, it's nice to have your needs met, right? It's nice to have your needs met. I'm not even interested in, in like, people use the word legacy to, to mean how much money you have saved up. I'm not even into that, Right. I just need my needs met. And you know what? You know what I just said before in terms of the king and his kingdom? When the king is in alignment, all his needs are met. First, seek first the kingdom of God and all your needs will be met. All these things will be added to you. 
it seems like you're on the right path. It seems like you're on the right path. Um, and that in terms of trying to achieve these goals that have deadlines, it seems out of alignment. It seems like you're reaching, you're forcing, you're trying, you're trying to be pleasing to the world. Like you said, you know, where did you say that? You said, uh, it seems that I can't find the discipline and it means I can find the discipline and motivation when it comes to my health. That means you have discipline, you have motivation. It's not that you lack those things, but it's harder when it comes to my wealth and some technical stuff. So my question is, should I focus more on doing what I enjoy? Uh, or should I focus on doing things that are harder, but more appreciated by the world? Now, one of the things you got you, you to gotta work with what you got and who you are, right? So for example, in order for my business to run, there's a lot of things that need to be done that I don't like doing. I don't want to do it. And so what? I have other people do it. I have uh, my business partner that takes care of the marketing strategies and all the technical stuff, right? I pay him, I pay him heavily. I pay him well. And then I also have a, a staff, a team, that, you know, uh, that he manages because I don't like managing people. I'm not interested in being a manager. I'm not interested in being a campaign creator and director. I'm not interested in administration whatsoever. I like this. I just want to do this. Um, customer service. I don't do any customer service, man. Uh, you know, um, my friend that makes a lot of money, he does. He does all his customer service because he tries to, you know, salvage every refund. <laughs> Um, but I have a customer service team or I have my wife, Colleen, who does a lot of my correspondence for me. So one of the things Dan Kennedy says, my business, one of my business mentors, Dan Kennedy says is you got to know yourself, decide on the kind of lifestyle you want to live. And then you, and then you build your business around it, right? So if you're building a business, think about the part that, that, that is, is, is effortless, effortless for you. Part just comes natural to you. There's a part of the business that just comes natural to you. Do that. Do the part that comes natural to you and then find a point man. This is the way it is for me because I don't like dealing with a lot of people. I don't want to manage a lot of people. I have some friends that are like, yeah, I got a team of 15 people and we meet every morning. And I'm like, wow, that sounds like it sucks. A point man. I'm just telling you me. I'm just telling you my the way it is for me. Maybe it is for you because I don't like dealing with people. So I don't like dealing with technical things. I don't even set the goals. He sets the goals and I just go to work and then I see how it turns out. There are certain things I need to do and I just do my assignment. You know, you see those uh, Instagram ads, you know, my little Instagram stories where, um, you know, I'm telling you something about give me a little tip or a little motivation. And then I make an offer, you know, join my like-minded group of men. So I got to make those. I have to make those. I make those a couple of times a month make a batch of them and then my team i let them work on disseminating that they take care of that you see what i'm saying so i'm not saying that everything that you I'm not saying you can avoid all hardship but what can you tolerate that's another important thing that i used to speak to you guys quite a bit about during the first uh one of the first semesters i said what can you tolerate what can you tolerate maybe not dominate what can you tolerate right these are all questions that you need to ask yourself but it seems like you're on your path, man. And if all your needs are being met and you're taking care of your body and you're taking care of your spirit, I can't see why things wouldn't turn out amazing for you. Patience. It's another one from St. John of the Cross. He talks about how we're so eager and we want it all now. We want, and I know I've been there, man. I want to see it now. I want to be there now. I'm curious about the future. And this just goes back to being boring. He, he says, you don't, need, you don't need that. You don't need any of that. You just need to allow yourself to be. Okay? <laughs> J.G. Bigley says, faith. Yeah, faith. Faith, faith that it'll all work out. Now, when we live in this fallen world where Lucifer is our God, he tricks us. You know, this is what the whole tree of the knowledge of good and evil is about. He tricks us into believing that it is our efforts that make us worthy, right? <laughs> and this is why there's so much confusion. That's being caught up in the magician, the warrior, and the lover. It's not your efforts that make you worthy. It's you being 
what your soul has called you to be. And a lot of times that's not as sexy as Instagram makes it look. My, my life is not as sexy as sometimes it looks on Instagram. <laughs> I don't even like, I don't even, I don't mess with Instagram that much, you know, below the threshold of what needs to be done. A lot of people, they spend their lives, you know, projecting sexiness. And then it confuses the shit out of others because they're like, wow, I guess my life should be sexy too. No, your life, allow your life to be boring. My life is boring. My life is boring, guys. <laughs> and I love it because I've gotten over the effeminacy. I've gotten over the need for novelty, the need for stuff, the need for excitement. I don't need that anymore. And look, I'm a little bit older than you guys. I'm 41. My needs are met, you know, and I discovered like the, the major need that I really even prayed for was fulfilled. And once fulfilled, I wasn't satisfied. And that's when I realized that's where I really started going, of course. I just wanted a house. I wanted a nice house for my children, like the house that my parents raised me in. And I got it. I got a nice house. Now, I don't want anything. I just want to be. I just want to be. And if all your needs are met, if you got a roof over your head, right? And you're not, if you're suffering and struggling to make ends meet, well, then maybe there's a little fire that needs to be lit so that you can, you can get up the far. And I'm not talking about having a million dollars saved up in the bank. I'm talking about as long as I can get up and put one foot in front of the other, as long as I can get up and I can work, I'll be all right. That's what my dad would say. As long as I can get up and work, as long as I can get up and work, as long as I can do something productive every day, you will be all right. You're going to be all right. Thank God for the job you got, right? Thank God, for, even if you are working at McDonald's, thank God for that. You know how many people don't, they can't work since COVID? COVID has destroyed the middle class in America. And I think that was, the, that was part of the agenda with all these lockdowns. The rich have only gotten richer. You know, the guys that like Bezos and, you know, those kind of guys, Walmart. They've only gotten richer, but small businesses have failed. And they're, you know, they had to shutter. Even the big businesses, they had to lay off thousands and thousands of people. A lot of people, they just can't make ends meet right now. And it's, and it's, it's having a trickle-down effect on the economy because people can't pay their rent. And if they can't rate, uh, pay their rent, the landlords don't get any money. So there's a, there's, a, there's a total economic deconstruction that is unfolding right before our eyes. And if you can work, no matter what that work is, if you can work, you can get up and you can work, you are blessed. And, and I would say, <laughs> humbling work is good. Humble work, humble work is good. Like think about the humble farmer, right? The world doesn't, the world will, will collapse if the humble farmer stopped doing his work. There was threats to our supply chain, our food su supply chain by the truck drivers. Because the truck drivers were, you know, uh, they were protesting something. There was something the, pro the truck drivers were going to protest about and they were going to go on strike. You know what happens if our humble truck drivers stop driving the trucks? <laughs> Anarchy, chaos. The supermarket won't have no fruit. You couldn't, you can't be, uh, you know, living in Maine and eating strawberries in the middle of the winter, <laughs> right? Driving them from, from Florida up to Maine. We won't be able to do that. Everything would crumble if our humble workers stopped. They got this whole bullshit, uh, this whole, you know, where they talk about who the heroes are and the essential workers are. You know, all of a sudden, anybody that wears uh, scrubs is a hero. I think it's the dumbest shit ever, but, you know, it's, when he, it's COVID propaganda. Juan, yeah, he says they wanted to protest because of the funding of the police. Yeah, because guess what happens when chaos ensues? The first people that are going to be threatened are the truck drivers because they got all the goods and, and they're vulnerable. Yeah, that's it. That's, that exactly is it. That's why. So humble work, good work. Righteous work. Yeah. <laughs> so be grateful for the work that you got. Will it be the work that you always have? Maybe not. Does it have to be? No. Could it be? Yes. Like I said, my dad's been fixing, fixing cars 
from 17 to 70. Be grateful for what you got and seek the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you, fellas. I forget what philosopher said it. Maybe it was Seneca. I don't remember. But he said something to the effect of, oh, I think it was Benjamin Franklin. You know, a man, there's two ways that a man can live. He can live by um, reducing his desires or increasing his means, right? Both of which are honorable. Both of which are very honorable. But we, because we live in a world where we're all tax slaves and consumers, right? We're, we're consumers and tax slaves. We work to be tax slaves and we consume. We're consumers and tax slaves. And because that's what's valued by the Lord of this world, we're taught that you need to need, you need to need, you need to want, right? The new thing. But when you give all that up, you give, you take power, you take your power back, right? Like a true stoic. I don't need those things. I don't want those things. All those things just throw me off and keep me trapped. I don't want anything. You know what I want? Be out of debt, right? I have my house. I want to pay off this debt and I don't want anything. Michael says he's a minimalist. Yeah, be a minimalist. <laughs> what could be more freeing than not needing anything? Good food, roof over your head, clothing on your back, right? Even these women, man, if, you, if, you're, if you're going after these women that need you to provide all kinds of luxury for her, when I talk about luxury, I mean just inordinate shit, right? Like, oh, I want a fast car, or she wants expensive jewelry and pocketbooks, and, and you, you could check these women out, you know, you could vet them right away, but when they have this taste for sweetness sweet things you got to turn away you want a simple girl right if you want a wife at all you want a woman at all get a simple woman right saint john chrysostom talks about this in his book um on marriage and family that I, i've spoken to you guys i've read from that book a couple times i think from you guys on marriage and family by saint john chrysostom he talks about how to find a woman he says find a simple woman find yourself a simple woman where you're not uh, you know, striving to keep her dazzled and keep her entertained, right? Find a simple woman and keep her pregnant. <laughs> That's my advice. All right. Right? She'll be, she'll be, she'll be fully satisfied, filled up, filled up with that baby in her belly. Keep her full, keep her full. By the way, a great book. Uh, I, I posted it on Instagram a couple of weeks ago. Great book on uh, feminism and exposing feminism. And it's a book written by a woman for a woman. Um, it's called The Anti-Mary Anti -Mary, uh, Agenda or something like that. Let's see if I can find it on Amazon. I'll put a link for you guys. The Anti-Mary and it, it talks about how, you know, feminism breeds uh, discontent in women. Anti-Mary Exposed, Rescuing the Culture from Toxic Femininity by Carrie, C-A-R-R-I-E, Gress, G-R-E-S-S. -S. Very good book. It's also available on uh, Audible. I listened to it and then I bought a bunch of copies to give to women that I know. Um, and it's about Mary, the mother of God, and her humble yet powerful way. She has a very powerful way. A, tr a truly powerful woman has a quiet power, a humble power. Not these loud, rambunctious thoughts out there. You don't want them. They're nothing but trouble. <laughs> Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things, we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. 
And if you want to join a like-minded group of men that get together every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age, it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.